happened to you? How did what they're going to think it happened overnight? And really it happened over like five years of just doing the same boring mundane things that you committed to doing. I don't think God is trying to make himself super hard to find. I don't think that that's his, he's like, all right, I'm going to try to make this really confusing for her. So she can't figure it out. Like, no, he loves us so much. He desires to guide us on the right path. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Ashley and today I'm really excited to get just up close and personal with y'all, give you a couple updates on what's been going on in my life and answer some questions that y'all asked me on my Instagram. If you want to be in on the next Q and A, just make sure to follow me over on my Instagram and I would love to have you a part of our little community. But without further ado, Let's get into it. I'm a little nervous because this is getting a little personal. Are you dating anyone currently? Love your content. You inspire me so much. So sweet. So right now I am not dating anyone current. Like I'm not like in a relationship. However, I am dating and going on dates. I know many of the people here are single. Many of the viewers here are single. So. I just want you to know I'm literally in it with you. I don't know, being single in your 20s in this day and age as a Christian is a whole thing. And I just want you to know you're not alone if that's where you're at. We're literally on this journey together. Okay, next question. What is your job? So I get this question all the time because probably y'all are like, what do you do with your day? Like you're on social media, what are you actually doing? For a, around a year and a half, I was doing freelance social media management for different clients and just managing their accounts. And just in the last couple of months, I would say since February, I've been pursuing my online ministry and just taking the step of faith to pursue it full time. And it was really scary, but I just feel this call and this tug to just go all in. I was like, all right, it's, it's never going to be easy to jump. So I might as well jump now. And I'm really glad that I did. So the Honey Scoop is my online ministry and we just offer resources for you to grow in your faith and reach your full potential in God. We do this through journals, books, and a community that I have called The Tree, which is to help you get consistent in God's word every single day with a community of godly women to grow your faith with. So that's just the beginning. And I guess, you know, we're starting a business. We're starting a ministry and it's a lot, but I know I'm going to look back on this video like five years from now and be like, girl, I'm so glad you took the plunge. But at first it's just... It's crazy to take a step of faith on God and just go for it, but that's what we're doing. So I'm so glad to have you all here in this community. It would not be what it is, and I would not be doing this if it weren't for y'all. And I'm also thankful that we are on this journey together because we don't even know where this ministry is gonna go. We just get to see God take it wherever he wants to take it together. Next question, how can I make Christian friends? Love this question. I would say the number one thing to do is to put yourself out there. It's hard and scary to do this. I think in any relationship, even with like dating, we have to just put ourselves out there. You're not going to meet your people in your house. You're just not going to. You have to actually like take a step of faith and put yourself out there in environments where people that you'd want to be friends with or people that you want to be in relationship with are. So if you're struggling with making Christian friends, I want you to know I was literally in your shoes. I struggled so long with making Christian friends for I think the first two years of my walk with the Lord. Most of my friends weren't Christians. I just was kind of doing it on my own. But when I got to college, I was really intentional about joining groups and joining just different communities that would help me make more friends. So if that's you, I would encourage you to Literally come up with a list of groups and, and Bible studies or churches that you can join and get plugged into like this week. Literally after this, after this video, I'm, I'm the girl that's gonna hold you accountable. You're gonna come up with a list and you're just gonna write down different things. So maybe it's a church that you've heard your friend talk about. Maybe it's a ministry that your high school hosts. Maybe it is my community, the tree with women who love the Lord and want to grow their faith. Maybe it's that one. Maybe it's if you're a young adult in Texas, there's the porch. There's like a lot of, there's a lot of different things that we have in our cities. I know all of y'all are around a church. I know that, 
literally make a list and then decide that you're gonna take action with that list. You're either gonna go to an event, you're gonna join the community, you're going to go to church that Sunday, you're going to go on online and join a small group, you're gonna reach out on Instagram to someone, like you're just gonna take an action step and I promise the Lord is gonna meet you on the other side of that action step. That's how I made my friends, is I just looked around at the different places where they could be and I just stepped out in faith. I think especially with one of my best friends, Cece, like I didn't really get close with her for a couple of months, but she was like in my community. So if it seems slow in coming, just be patient, keep showing up, and eventually you're going to find the, the friends that you've always wanted. Just keep showing up and putting yourself out there. How do I discern God's voice and mine? I get this question all the time, and I want you to know I myself have had this question a lot. So if you're struggling with this, just know, like, I think we all do. We all want to hear God's audible voice and we all don't want any risk with the things that we do with our day to day life. Like we want to be able to do something and know that it's going to work without any risk. And I think that's why we so crave God's voice. Um, and there's wisdom here. And the Bible does talk about, you know, hearing God's voice and God giving us wisdom. So if you're in that place and you want to know the difference between God's voice and your thoughts, I'd first say in prayer, ask God to remove any thoughts that are from you or are from the enemy, the devil. Just pray and ask the Lord to like clear your mind. Okay. Step number one. Step number two is I want you to just bring the questions and the concerns and the struggles to him. Just literally bring them to him in prayer. This is like very important in prayer. Just bring them to him. Maybe you're journaling, whatever it is, bring them to him in prayer. Ask him questions. What I've done, I've literally just sat and I've asked him questions. And this is just my relationship with the Lord, but just asked him questions and just like I've waited and I've been still to just hear if anything, if there's just a response, not like an audible voice, but if I feel anything, if I'm reminded of anything, if a scripture comes to mind, I just quiet my mind before the Lord. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. I don't think God is trying to make himself super hard to find. I don't think that that's his, he's like, all right, I'm gonna try to make this really confusing for her so she can't figure it out. Like, no, he loves us so much. He desires to guide us on the right path but we often have to quiet ourselves and still ourselves before him like a relationship. If you're going to a counselor, the Holy Spirit is counselor. If you were going to a counselor and you said, listen, here's my struggles, what do you think? You would listen to what the counselor said, right? The same thing is true with the Holy Spirit. So if you are desiring guidance and counsel, listen to the Holy Spirit. Just try to listen, okay? Just listen. Then we're getting to the next step. Whatever you feel is prompted on your heart, prompted in your mind, maybe you just kind of, you're just having a feeling towards something, right? Okay, is it confirmed in God's word? This is very important because there are some things that we think about that we feel that aren't backed up by the truth of God's word and God will never instruct you to do something that is not in his word. So the next step when you feel that prompting is, okay, is this in God's word? Does God's word support this, this? Then if you feel like it does, if you see that it does, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to take an act of faith and just move, just do the thing. Step out in faith. I have an example. I was once just practicing hearing the voice of God, tuning into the voice of God a couple of months ago. And I, I was like, all right, Lord, what coffee shop do you want me to go to today? It was a season where I was going to a coffee shop every day to do work because I just didn't want to be in my house doing work. And I waited for his response. And I said, Lord, I will go anywhere that you want me to go. I will be on assignment anywhere that you want me to go. Please just let me know where you want me to go. Nashville is a big place for coffee shops. He could have told me anything. And I felt on my heart after I prayed, barista parlor in the Gulch. It's like, okay, that's very specific. I prayed again, barista parlor in the Gulch. Okay. Like I'm just describing my relationship with the Lord here. This is just how I 
this is just how it went down for me, but I just felt this prompting. Okay. I walked over to the barista parlor in the Gulch and what do you know, there are two girls there that I knew that I was trying to hang out with that weekend and they were literally at this at this coffee shop. I ended up sitting with them, talking with them. We ended up grabbing lunch after and it was so clear that I had to go to this coffee shop, right? It was clear, God was like, okay, bravo. It was almost like confirmation. There have been other times though, let's be honest, where I've felt like the same kind of like voice or I've felt a prompting and I've taken action and it was a complete total bomb and it failed and th it just didn't work out. And I don't really know the answer to that. But what I do know is that God will lead us. That's just an example of if like an impromptu, you want to just ask him something, see what he says, move on it if it is confirmed in his word very simple way but if you really are discerning like where you should move or like very very big decisions like where like what you should do with your life what career you should pursue those are not off the whim off the cuff decisions you should just make because you felt in your in your mind that you heard like california you know that's not i don't know if i would advise that god often reveals himself in the waiting and in time and as you just seek him every day with this question and you bring it to him, he says in James that he will give wisdom to all without finding fault. He will give you wisdom. He will guide you on the right path. But often we want the answer like ASAP Rocky. We want the answer as soon as we ask. But God in his kindness wants to, I think, increase our dependency on him and he has us wait, wait on him. So when I moved to Nashville, it, it took a long time. I, I felt like a prompting in my spirit, but it took a couple of months for me to really trust him and take the step. But it was confirmed through so many things. It was confirmed through circumstances. It was confirmed through wise counsel. It was confirmed through the Bible. I got a scripture. It was therefore uh, like, it was uh, Isaiah 43, 19. Do not dwell on the past, for I am doing a new thing. Something of that sort. I really wish I could remember it right now. But anyway, God confirmed through his word. He confirmed through his people, through wise counsel. He confirmed through circumstances. He confirmed through like such peace that it was the right thing to do. And so again, I just took the leap of faith. It could have been wrong. I could have hated Nashville. I could have hated moving here, but I loved it and he provided just like that. So. God's voice and discerning God's voice is a whole thing, like a whole, whole, whole thing. But if you're in that place where you are trying to discern God's voice, I would just say the first thing is to just ask him, just literally ask him, present your request to him, ask him for wisdom. And it could be a thing where you feel like automatic peace about something, or it could be a thing where it takes months to feel peace and clarity. But just know in his word, it says he will give you wisdom. So we get to actually believe that however he goes about that, however he brings you that wisdom, he will bring it to you. What do you ask for when you get your hair done and your hair routine? So pretty. Thank you, love. Okay, so I actually get caramel balayage. It's not as fresh right now because I got it a couple of months ago, but I get caramel balayage, that's what it's called. And I curl my hair, my hair is very thick. I curl it or straighten it once a week and it holds. Straightening, I might have to like keep up with it more so throughout the week, but when I curl my hair, it just holds really well because of the texture of my hair, it's very thick. Um, I can absolutely do a hair tutorial for y'all. If you'd like to see that, just let me know in the comments below. But I try to just do it once a week and wash it once a week so that I'm just not damaging it and so that it stays very not damaged and then I don't have to cut it for a long time. Tips for consistency and motivation. Great question. It wasn't even a question. Okay, what I would say to this is to do the thing that you committed to doing even when you don't feel like it. Motivation and consistency, it's very hard because I think the small changes we make in our lives, eventually they create incredible change, but sometimes you don't see that change 
for months or even a year down the road. So it's very hard to keep doing something that you're like, this is not working, nothing's happening, nothing's changing, but really you doing that thing over time is gonna have a compound effect and it's actually going to make a difference. So if you just remind yourself every day, like, okay, I'm doing this thing and I know that eventually me doing this thing every day, although that it doesn't look like it's really making a difference now, eventually every day me doing this, it's all going to add up and compound to this result that I'm looking forward to. In order for you to do that, for you to stay consistent in actually doing the things that you said you were gonna do, I have a habit tracker and it's on my phone. I'm literally recording on my phone though right now but I have a habit tracker and it's very, very helpful because every single day I just, I have these habits. They're very small habits. It's like, I want to wake up at this time. I want to exercise for 30 minutes. I want to just different things with work that I have on there. And I will literally just at the end of the day, boom, I'll just slide it over. And it's really good because it gives me like this feeling of, okay, I'm actually accomplishing things even though it doesn't feel like much progress is being made, I'm checking off these habits, meaning I'm actually doing things to reach my goal in the future. Just commit to consistency when you don't feel like it. And in order to do that, know that every single thing that you do every day is going to add up to something, whether you like it or not, whether you like the direction you're going or not, like the things that you do every day, they make such a difference in where you're going. And in order for you to stay on track with that, literally just come up with the different areas of your life and what you want to improve. And then think, what are the small actions that I can take every day that are going to get me to the result that I want? Okay, so if that's, you want to grow in your relationship with God. Okay, I'm probably gonna to have to read the Bible. So what could be on your habit tracker? Reading the Bible for at least 15 minutes. Very small, but over time, over a year, you're going to see massive growth in your relationship with the Lord. Maybe it's exercise, maybe you wanna be more fit. Okay, just commit to 30 minutes of exercise a day. Great. Even if it's a 30 minute walk, yes, that counts. Even if you feel like it's not making any difference, yes, it still counts. You're still gonna cross it off and you're gonna know each of those. It's like a seed that's being planted. Do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Every single thing that you do every day, every time you choose to be consistent when you don't feel like it, eventually all those seeds and all that watering is going to produce this incredible harvest where people in five years are gonna go, what happened to you? How did, what? They're gonna think it happened overnight and really it happened over like five years of just doing the same boring mundane things that you committed to doing eventually people are going to want the results that you had, but it's gonna be really hard for them to get it because you have to do the daily grind of like the little things every day to eventually reap the big harvest. Next question, how did you get closer to God so you could be where you are now? The number one thing that helped me grow in my faith is reading the Bible. I didn't start reading the Bible till two or three years into my faith journey because I thought it was just scary, intimidating. I would have my daily Devo. I would go to church. I would watch sermons online. I really loved God, but I was very intimidated by the Bible. The moment that I started to read the Bible in 2020, it completely just changed my life. It changed my mind. It revealed to me different things about God that I didn't even know were there before I started reading the Bible. So if that's you, you want to grow closer to God, the number one thing I'd suggest you to do is to get a Bible and start reading it every single day. Even if it's just 15 minutes a day, it's going to make a huge difference in your walk with the Lord. And if you want a plan that's going to help you stay consistent in reading the Bible every single day with a community of godly women to help you be accountable and to grow your faith with, I would love for you to join my community, The Tree. The link will be down in the description. We meet virtually and it's just been a really sweet space to cultivate with y'all and to just be on this journey with you guys together as you grow your faith and as you reach your full potential. So that's it for my Q and A. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and also follow me on Instagram if you haven't already at Ashley Hetherington. And I'm just so thankful that y'all sent in these questions. I know we got real and we got personal and I might've gotten up in your business, but I am just 
so glad to have y'all in this community and that we can just be really growing together. I believe in you so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye!